And welcome, mindset, to this session of winter, no, winter school, spring school. You see, I'm already, my gear's already messed up. Anyway, you're here for spring school. Mindset is make sure you talk to me on the page, and especially you need to go to the events page, but I'll explain that just now, because today we're going to drink some Matt's Lit, and I'm here with Peter. Peter, what are you doing today? Well, first of all, this is very confusing, because we never do <laughs> mathematical literacy on a Monday. I know. It's always on a Thursday. Mm. So when I came in today, I thought, oh, thank goodness, tomorrow's Friday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's not. And we always mm. say... Thursday means it's quarter to Friday. Well, today, guys, I hate to tell you this. It's only quarter past Friday. We've got a whack of time <laughs> to go before it's Friday. But the great thing is mathematical literacy, and we are going to go through some past papers. In fact, we're going to be going through the February-March um, supplementary papers, and we're going to do a few questions from the paper one, a few questions from the paper two, and both sets of questions are all going to be either about finance or about graphs. All right, that sounds like a lot of fun. I think it is, but you got yeah. a lot of fun. Stuff I got there. a lot of fun stuff to also give away, so I'm going to tell the mindsetters what they need to do so they can win this awesome stuff while you make your way across the board. Are you getting rid of me? I'll go. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, mindset is make sure you keep talking to us on the page. But now what you guys need to make sure you do is go to the events page and look up the today's date for today's session. So you can make sure that you can find the challenge question in that events page. That is the secret. It's in the events page. So make sure you go to that events page. And remember, when you do post, you have to post up with the code. But we'll explain that now because right now we've got this awesome mindset t-shirt that we're going to be giving away. See, so you can be matching like me. And we have these awesome, awesome Matt's spring school books to give away so you guys can study. And we have these Awesome, awesome, awesome hampers. We've got this Proverb CD. We've got this Mikasa and Platinum mix. Like, it's got so many cool remixes and new editions of the songs. And we've got this Electro mix. So make sure you guys post, 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 post. Follow us on the challenge question. And you can enter in four different ways. You can email us at win at learnextra.co.za. Then you can also Facebook us as on the event page, like I explained. Then you can also get us on pep text. And you can SMS on 083-448-8810. Make sure you write that down. It's 083-448-8810. Yes. So actually, here's the challenge question now. Peter, you need to explain for them. Right, folks. Let's have a look at this challenge question. Before we even look at the challenge question, I came into the studio earlier, and mm -hmm. I just saw flowers everywhere. If you look <laughs> at um, Ty's computer, yes, my you can see a whole lot of flowers. And if you look back here, back here, here we go, you can see all these weird. And I walked and said, what is all this about? And they said, it's spring school. And I thought, you know, that's very, very uh, almost girl oriented, very girlish. So, guys, to make you feel comfortable, on the qu uh, competition question, I've also put in springs, but real springs, you know, like a spring, spring. So, here's a spring, spring. That's to make the guys feel at ease instead of all these, like, funny flower things, all right? <laughs> so, that's what the green squiggles are. They're actually springs. You, you know what I mean by spring? Ka Bing. Okay. Competition question. Here we go. An amount of 1,000 Rand is invested in a fixed deposit account that grows at a rate of 12% per annum, compounded quarterly. What will the total value of the investment be after four years? Will it be A, 1,480 Rand? Will it be B, 1,604 Rand and 71 cents? Or will it be C, 1,573 rand and 52 cents. Guys, you're in grade 12. This shouldn't be a challenge at all for you, okay? In fact, it's just called a competition question. It's not even called a challenge question because there's no challenge in here. It's a competition question. You can all do this by now because you're in grade 12. You've been doing things like this since grade 10, hey? So grade 12, this should be no problem at all. Get your answers to us. But there's a funny little code here. The code is 2438. Now, that's not one of the answers, okay? That's a code. I don't know what that code means, so Ty will tell you. So, yes, mindset is you cannot enter unless you have that code attached to your answer. Make sure that that code is attached to your answer, otherwise you cannot enter. I'm repeating this one more time. 
make sure you post with that code. Otherwise, you do not qualify to enter. Because the reason why we have that code is so when you do post up on Peptex or on the Facebook page or on any other platform that you're able to win it, we can actually register and be like, okay, so this person is following this part of the show so they know the code. So on that note, this is where we now continue with the rest of the show. And also make sure you look out for during the ad breaks because that's when the question will also be posted up. And I want to say thank you to Liberty for sponsoring the show. And we can get on the, with, with the show. All right. And before we get on with the show, I've given you two hints. Two little clues. Yeah. First of all, here's a funny little formula. You might want to use it. It's A is equal to P bracket 1 plus I all to the power of N. And then I've underlined something in the question. I've underlined the words compounded quarterly. That might be important. Okay. Might be important. In fact, there's no might about it. It will be important. It's very important. Okay, let's move on, shall we? Today's um, program. We are looking, like I said, at the February and March 2012 supplementary paper. And we've taken a few questions from that paper. Remember, guys, the guys who set the supplementary paper versus set your final paper for this year. Eh? So you, well, I think they have. I, no more than likely they have. That's what they used to do. So the chances are I'd go through the supplementary paper very, very carefully and make sure I'm beginning to get used to the style of the examiners. Okay? And remember, uh, chances are they don't change the set of examiners every single year. So chances are I would think and I could be wrong, but I would think maybe the set of examiners that set your paper last year have set your paper this year. So guys, go through these past papers just to get a feel on the style of the questioning that's coming across. Okay, without any further ado, let's have a look at this. So this first question then is adapted from the February-March 2012 NSC Paper 1, and it was question 1.2. A local supermarket pays their casual packers 18 rand per hour. Mike works a daily shift of two and a half hours as a casual packer, starting at 16.30. What time does Mike's daily shift end? All right. 16.30. What does 16.30 actually mean? 16.30 is the same thing As 4.30 in the afternoon. Right. Little clue. When you get these 24-hour clocks, just take off two hours. Okay? Or rather, take off 12 hours. And you will get the actual time. So 16 minus 12 is 4. Okay, so you're going to get four o'clock in the afternoon. I know that's a weird way of remembering it because mathematically, you've probably seen core teachers now turning in their graves saying, how oh, can you tell these kids that? But you know, it's a nice way to remember it. 16 minus 12 is four. So I know I'm dealing with 4.30 in the afternoon. Now, if um, someone works two and a half hour shifts and they're starting at 4.30 in the afternoon, watch carefully. So it's 4.30, 5.30, and another half an hour means they're finishing at 7 o'clock at night, at 7 p.m. There's another way of doing this, hey? and that's with the use of your calculator. And I would strongly advise that you use the calculator. Let's do that. So on my calculator, and about two or three weeks ago on a Thursday evening, if you've been following the programs, and guys, that's why it's so essential to follow our series. Eh? Every Thursday night, we're on from 5 to 7, except this Thursday because of the spring school. And when we're on, we're picking up little hints all the time. Now, about two weeks ago, I showed our students how to use your time with the use of a calculator. And let's have a look at this weird and wonderful button over here. It's the button just above the button that it says English. It looks something like this. So it's actually got a circle, comma, comma, comma. Can you see that? Let me write it here for you. So it's like the circle, then there's a comma, comma, comma. Let's bring it up again and have a look at it. Okay, so it's just above the word ENG. Cool? Now, when I type in time, my calculator is an extremely, extremely clever thing, but it has no intelligence. In other words, it can't think for itself. 
You've got to whack information into that calculator, and then it can do things for you. So what I've got to tell my calculator is this. I am dealing with hours. I am dealing with minutes. I am dealing with seconds. Now, you can't kind of just tell your calculator that. You've got to push buttons because that's the only way calculators can register what you're putting inside it. So if I were to type in 1630, I'm going to type in 16. Now, watch carefully. Now, I push the time button, right? Now I'm pushing 30 because by pushing that time buttons, I'm saying, that's my only hours I've got. I've just got 16 hours. The next thing, Mr. Calculator, I'm going to push in is going to be the minutes. And so we do it. We push 30. Now I push my time button again. And you can see the little square on your screen. So what I've told my calculator now is this, I've got 30 minutes and that's all I've got. And I'm going to tell my calculator and I've got no seconds. So I'm going to push zero time button again. Now to that, I'm going to add two and a half hours. So I'm going to push plus two hours, 30 minutes, because half an hour is 30 minutes, we know this, plus zero seconds equals, now watch what it's going to give me. It gives me 19 hours or 1900 hours. So I could also say if I use my calculator that my answer could also be 1900 hours. And you know what guys, there's nothing wrong with that answer because the question has not told us to put it in 12 hour time or in a 24 hour time. So I can take that upon myself. Let's read the question again. At what time does Mike's daily shift end? Well, we could write 1900 hours or we could say 7 p.m. Okay, got the idea? Two important things I wanted to come uh, get to you about this question. Number one, that time can be in 12 hours or 24-hour clock. Okay, if you're dealing in a 24-hour clock and you've got more than 13 um, or more than 1,200 hours, so if I've got 1,300 or 14 or 15, subtract 12 hours, and then you're going to get a number, and just remember that's p.m. Okay, so 1,400 hours minus 12 is 2 p.m. Cool? And then the other thing which was crucial was using this um, calculator with my time. Right, let's move on. The next part of that question says this. Determine Mike's wage if he worked 12 shifts per month. Use this formula. The wage is equal to 18 rand times the number of shifts times the number of hours per shift. Guys, there's nothing challenging about this at all. It's like your competition question, isn't it? It's straightforward. It's basic. And by now, time, I presume answers are just flowing in. They're eh? literally pouring in. That's fantastic because that means two things. Number one, they know the answer. But number two, more importantly, they tuned in and they're learning about some mathematical literacy. All right. So my wage, here we go, is equal to 18 rand multiplied by the number of shifts. I'm going to do that again because somehow I went a little crazy. Okay, let's try that again. So it's 18 rand multiplied by the number of shifts. We're working 12 shifts. So it's times 12 multiplied by the number of hours per shift. And remember, we said that Mike was working two and a half hour shifts. So let's write that down. Times two and a half or 2,5 equals. My calculator is going to do this work for me. Why? Because it's Monday afternoon and I don't want to think. So it's going to be 18 rand times, we're working 12 shifts times two and a half hours per shift equals 540. So I've got 540 rand is what Mike is going to earn working two and a half hour shifts 12 times. Okay, again, straightforward. Right, let's go on to our next question. Our next question is this. It's adapted again from the paper one, and this was their question 1.3. So, Jacobo and Sikhle's business made a profit of 135,400 rand during 2010. Their total expenses in the same year were 235,656. Guys, there's one thing I want to bring to your attention. This over here, 135,400. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it when question, when money is broken up like that because for some students, they read it as 135 and they stop, okay? Others read it as 400 rand. 
So it's 135,400. So it should have actually been written like this, 135,400 rand. Unfortunately, what happens with the spacing um, and the type setting, the 400, because there's a spacing, jumps to the next line. So please be aware of that, okay? As examiners, examiners try and make sure that doesn't happen. But it may happen, might slip through on the odd occasion. So just read that number carefully. And remember, if there's part over here and it ends there, just write it. Uh, on the top of the question as one whole figure, like I've done over here. So Jacobo and Seekley's business made a profit of 135,400 rand during 2010. Their total expenses in the same year were 235,656 rand. Calculate the total income of the business during 2010. Use the formula. The total income is equal to the profit plus the total expenses. Okay, I'm going to just um, detract a little bit from that and say the following. If they never gave you that formula in the exam, right? Let's say they never told you this thing, that total income is profit plus total expenses. You know what? You know how to calculate your income uh, or your profit, don't you? Let's write this out. We know that my profit must be my income minus my expense. So, every month, I'm going to get an income, right? What's going to happen? My headmaster is going to say to me, Mr. Templeton, here's your salary. I don't take that money and say, oh, fantastic, I'm saving the whole lot. Woo, there's my profit for the month, all in the bank. doesn't work like that, hey? Why? Well, number one, I've got a wife, and she's expensive. So straight away now, I've got these little things called expenses, right? So it's the wife, it's the electricity, it's the water, it's the petrol, it's the this, it's the that. Whatever I have left over after paying all those expenses is what I'm going to have left as a savings. If it were a business, what I would do is I would get money coming in. Okay, so let's say, for example, I'm selling T-shirts. Can I grab that? Alrighty. So I'm selling T-shirts. Here they are, lovely T-shirts. This is what you can win, one of these lovely things. I still don't know why they won't give me one. <laughs> but there it is, a lovely T-shirt. Now, if I was selling T-shirts and I sold them at 20 Rand each, and let's say I sold five, so I got 100 Rand. I don't take that 100 Rand and say, cool, that's my profit. Not at all. I've got to pay for the cost of the t-shirt. I've got to pay for the printing of the t-shirt. Once I've paid that, and I've got money left over, that's my profit. And on that note, I'm going to hand over to Ty, because I think it's time for a break. All right, so mindset is, make sure you look for the challenge question in the ad breaks, and do not forget these awesome prizes that are going to be up for grabs. So if I was you, I would be posting frantically. And remember, to also enter, you have to make sure you put the, your actual answer and the code underneath in the comment section of the, of the actual fa Facebook comment. Facebook post. Yes, Facebook post. <laughs> so, guys, again, on the board, you can see it, 2438. Make sure you write that number down and put it with your answer. And you can enter as many times as you want. So, get entering. But on that note, see you after this break. And welcome back, Mindsetters. I hope you've been frantically posting those questions. I am checking the page. So... I need more of you. Keep on posting. There's this awesome t-shirt to give away and these awesome, awesome CDs. Like, wow, it is so cool. Guys, I cannot stress enough how awesome these hampers are. I wish I could take them home with me. Like, you know, I could just do this and just walk out the studio. But I can't do that because that's illegal. So I'm not going to. But Mindset is also these awesome, helpful books for you guys. So make sure you post so you can have these really handy for you guys when your exams. But remember, to win, you need to add that code at the bottom of your, well, with your question with your answer <sighs> anyway you need to post with your answers to make sure that you can be eligible to win these awesome prizes but for now this is where i hand over to mr peter peter take it away i think you're sounding very confused you may, it's, it's because it's a lot it's of stuff. monday and not thursday <laughs> thing you know it's it's, it's <sighs> all right okay folks so just before the break i was uh, posting this um kind of question to you where i was saying this um 
if they never gave you the formula that total income is equal to profit plus total expenses, how could we work that out? Well, we know that my profit is the income that's coming in minus all those expenses. So I was using that example of selling T-shirts. I sell five, and I sell them for a, a 20 rand each. I get in 100 rand. Then I've got to pay out 50 rand because that's what I bought the T-shirts for. Plus a thir further 30 rand for all the printing I did, I'm left with 20 rand. So my profit is 20 rand. Profit equals income minus expenses. Okay? So what happens if I want to work out the income? Let's have a look. So my income then is equal to, I've got my profit. Now, if I uh, have got a minus expense, when I go across, I'm going to say plus expenses. So income is equal to my profit plus expenses. Let's have a look. Income equals profit plus total expenses. Do you see where we got that from? Okay, straightforward. Now, let's fill in the figures for this, shall we? So, we're going to say, let's get rid of all this. So, we are um, sticking to what they've told us here. We're in the same order anyway. Right, so what is my profit? Now, the question tells us that we made a profit of 135,400 rand. Plus my expenses. And my expenses were 200 and 35 rand, 656, okay? Sorry, 235,656 rand. Now, with the use of my calculator, let's do this. We're going to say I've got 135,400 rand plus 235,656 rand equals, and there's my answer, 371 and 56 371 and 56 rand. Okay? Are we all right with that? Straightforward, eh? Nothing really challenging or difficult. Just a matter of adding it all up. Right, our next question says this. Jacobo and Sixle shared their profit such that Jacobo received 54,160 rand. Determine the ratio of Jacobo's profit to Sixle's profit in simplified form. Ah, now, we've got to go back and we've got to remember what that profit was, and I've already forgotten. So, let's go back a page. And let's write down what our profit was. Okay. I'm going to need your help here, please. Okay. So Alrighty. the profit is 135,400 rand. Okay. So let's just go back there. 135,400 rand. In fact, rand. it's right here on the screen. I didn't even need to go back. And what they're going to do with that profit is this. Jacobo is going to get a bit, as so is Cicle. Right? Because the two of the guys are running the business. So it seems fair that both of them are going to get a bit of a profit. But maybe they're not going to get the same amount of profit. In fact, we're told that uh, Jacobo received 54,160 rand. Now, see clear, we weren't told what he's received. But we know what the profit is. And the profit is... 135,400. So let's do that. 135,000. Oops, let's get there. Cool. 135,400. Minus uh, Jacobo's share, which was 54,160 rand. So it means Sikhle's share is 81,240. 81,000. 240 rand. Now, guys, that seems a little bit unfair, hey? Because Jacobo's only got 54,160 rand of the profit, where Sikli has got 81,240 uh, rand of the profit. Why is Sikli getting more? Well, there could be a number of reasons for that, okay? Maybe Sikli put more money into the business when they got started. And based on that, it was decided that Cecilia would get a certain amount where Jacobo would only get slightly less of an amount. Okay. In fact, they probably came up with a ratio. And this is what the question is. What ratios 
are we actually dealing with here? Now, do you remember some time ago I said whenever we're dealing with the ratio, we can use a calculator to help us out. And how do we do that? Well, if I've got, uh, let's say, 10 is to 2, okay? Now, 10 is to 2, we know is 5 is to 1. Agreed? But how would I use that on my calculator? If I've got 10 is to 2, I could put 10 divided by 2 or 10 over 2 using my fraction button, push equals, and it would give me my ratio of 5 is to 1. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to move my calculator right across the page, okay? And I'm going to say, okay, let's do this. Fraction button, 54,160 rand. Over, over what? Well, let's go back to this side again so we can read it, okay? Over 81,240. Now, watch what happens when I push equals. Equals, and I get two to three. Now, folk, I can't, I may not do this as my answer, two over three. Why not? Because that's not a ratio. A ratio is something to something. So two over three, I'm going to write as... 2 is to 3. So it's 2 is to 3. And that's the ratio which we're asked for. Okay? So determine the ratio. And we've done that. In other words, when Jacobo and when Cifre came up with their business, they sat down and they said, you know what? Because of this or because of that, whatever the reason, okay, maybe Cifre put more money in or maybe Cifre works more hours than Jacobo does. Right? Because of that, we will say that for every bit of money we get, Sikhle is going to get three parts of that money, and um, Tukobo is going to get two parts of that money. So we'll divide all our profit, divide it by five. Sikhle gets three parts of those five, and Tukobo gets two parts of the five. Are we clear? Let's go on. My next question says this. They predict that in 2011, the business's profit will be 8% greater than the profit they made in 2010. Calculate the profit the business will make in 2011. Right, folks, so we know what that profit is in 2010. It's 135,400 rand. We are also told that we're expecting that to increase by 8%. Now, you know how to do this, hey? All you've got to do is take that profit of 2010, find 8% of it, and add it to that profit. And you'll get your predicted profit for 2011. There's another way of doing it as well, so I'm going to show you both ways. So first of all, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say, right. I've got a profit of 135,400. So I've got 135,400. But next year, I'm expecting to increase that by 8%. So I'm going to find 8% of 135,400 Rand equals. So I've got my 135,400 rand. To that we're going to add, and let's do it with our calculator. We say, right, I want 8%, so it's 8 over 100, multiplied by 135,400, and that's going to give me 10,832. 10,832. We're going to add up those two figures now. So we're going to say, right, the 10,832 plus the profit, which was, what was it again? 135,400, 135,400 equals 146,232. 146,232 rand. That's the expected profit that uh, we're expecting in 2011. Now, this question doesn't ask it, but I'm going to ask it. How much money does Sikhle think he's going to get next year? 
Ah, now that's an interesting one, eh? Because, do you remember we said that Sikhle, of all the profit we make, he's going to get three parts of that profit. And um, the other chap, what was his name? I've forgotten his name already. My name, uh, Jacobo, is going to get two parts. So how many parts in total are there? Three parts here, two parts here, five. So if I take this amount... And I now divide this, I'm going to use a different color, divide it by five, I will know how much one part is worth. But Sikhe is going to get three parts. So if I multiply it by three, we will now know what Sikhe can expect to get out of next year's profits. So let's do that. We've got our money on our calculator already. There it is, 146,232 rand. We divide it by five, and we're going to land up with a wacko answer of 29,246 rand and 40 cents. We're multiplying it by three, because remember, CC gets three parts, and our answer now is 87,739 rand and 20 cents. Now, guys, that wasn't one of the questions, okay? I've just added to it, because I think the basic question fits nicely with a paper one. I've added another little bit, which would be perfect if you were writing a paper two. Okay, so here's a wonderful paper two question. I give you the profit for 2010. I then tell you we're expecting a greater profit in 2011. So what is Seekler expecting to get in 2011? Cool. Unfortunately, that wasn't the question. We're dealing with the paper one, and so it was basic. What was the original question? Something about how much profit will they actually make in 2011? Answered the question. Let's move on. My next question. In 2001 and 2009, Statistics South Africa ran the census at school project using a sample of South African schools. The purpose of this project was to make schools aware of what a census was and also to obtain information about the schools. The schools could then use this information for teaching data handling. The bar graph below gives a percentage of the schools in 2001 and 2009 census at school. Project that had the listed facilities and services. Okay. Right, let's have a look at that graph. That's a lovely bar graph. Eh? What sort of bar graph is that? That's a compound bar graph. Okay, so it doesn't just have one single bar. It's got... Two bars next to each other. Lovely compound bar graph. So the facilities and services at South African schools during 201 and 209. Now the first thing we've got to have a look at is this. Because I have two different types of graphs, you will notice I have two different colors represented here. Okay, Blue representing 2001 and the red representing 2009. Okay. So we have electricity, we have running water, we have library, computers, emails, and internet. Okay, Let's just look at that graph and discuss it. And, and like I've always said to you, guys, when you get your paper at the end of the year, remember you're entitled to 10 minutes reading time. So just before the exam starts, if your exam starts at 9, you get there early. All right? Please remember. You never know what's going to happen along your way. You could have a flat tire. There could be horrendous traffic, especially if you're living in Johannesburg. Okay? Um, there could be so many things that could go slightly wrong. So plan to be at school well before 10 to 9. You don't want to arrive at 10 to 9 and walk in and stop. Okay? You want to get there a little bit earlier. So get there a little bit earlier. When you walk in, you walk in, you're relaxed, you're refreshed. And then the teacher will tell you at 10 to 9, guys, time to read. Now you've got 10 minutes. And what I'm doing in those 10 minutes, I'm scanning over my paper very quickly. Okay? What I like to tell my students to do, the number one thing you do is you work out. You've got a paper for 150 marks. Okay? So you know more or less where 50 marks is. So just scan through those marks. So around, uh, 50 marks is round about here. So after an hour, I should be at this point. Another 50 marks, I should be after two hours at that point. And finally, the last 50 marks is the last hour. Then the second thing you do is you're just scanning through the whole paper and getting a feel for it. And when you come across a question like this, just look at that bar. 
okay? And try and work out what is going on here, what is it about? If you don't have enough time, well, that's okay. When you actually start the exam and you get to the question, then you can also scan through it and get an idea. So let's just do that, okay? If we look at that quickly, we can see certain things about this graph, okay? We're going to do this after the break, though. All right, so mindset is make sure you get on the page. Remember, it's the events page. Look for the events for spring school. Then go to the challenge question and post your code and the answer there. Because after the next ad break, the competition is going to close. So mindset is if I was you, I'd be getting there very quickly because you have to win this awesome soul candy prize and this awesome universal prize. So make sure you guys keep posting. But for now, we're going to see you after this ad break. And welcome back, Mindsetters. You know what? I actually just had one of my other like supervisors come in and be like, you know what? Just so you know, actually the competition's closing in the next five minutes. My apologies, Mindsetters. But that gives you five minutes to make sure you whip out your phone and get on the events page and post under the competition question so you can win these awesome, awesome prizes. So mindset is, look, I, I, I don't have enough hands to hold this stuff, you know? Like, imagine if you were to, like, walk through your school, like, yeah, yeah, I got this stuff. Yeah, I'm awesome. Yeah. But anyway, mindset is, post, post, post. Don't forget to also add your code. And good luck. For now, Peter, take it away. Right, and remember, there are only five minutes. In fact, after Ty has spoken, there's only three minutes. Yep. <laughs> but here's the question again. An amount of 1,000 Rand is invested in a fixed deposit account that grows at a rate of 12% per annum compounded quarterly. What will the total value of the investment be after four years? Will it be A, 1,480 Rand? Will it be B, 1,604 Rand 71 cents? Will it be C, 1,573 Rand and 52 cents? And remember, a little hint, A is equal to P bracket 1 plus I, uh, all to the power of N. Remembering, it's compounded quarterly. And um, remember, our code as well when you're answering that is 2438. But guys, it's not just about the competition, eh? If you've got questions as well that you would like me to go through, in the next uh, half an hour or so, please send them through to Ty. He, he will um, then relay the message to me, and then I can go through that question. All right? Is that okay, Ty? That's not a problem for me. Oh, actually, that's kind of my job description, so... Great. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go on. So we said we've come across this question, and the, one of the things we're going to do is look at that graph and say, well, what does it all involve? So first of all, all my blue uh, little bars represent 2001. My red bars represent 2009. Okay, so looking at that, we can see that in 2009, when compared to 2001, there was an increase of the use of electricity. Running water increased in some of the schools. Library, there was an increase of the number of libraries in the school in 2009 when compared to 2001. Computers, that's encouraging, hey? Oh, what an increase. In 2001, only 23,6 schools used computers, whereas in 2009, we had a whopping 53% of schools using, using computers. That's encouraging. It's just uh, discouraging, hey? Because, sure, life's all about technology right now, and we'd like to believe that a lot of people are using computers, but statistics show... That's not happening. Okay. Then email hasn't gone up very much, eh? In 2001, 13,4% of schools were using it. In 2009, only 14,7%. Internet, 12,7% of schools were using the internet. 2009, only 14,5%, which is really sad when you think that we can get so much information from the internet. Right, let's have a look at our very first question. Our first question says this. Which faculty or service showed the smallest percentage use during 2001? And remember, 2001 is represented by my blue graph. Which is the smallest? Well, it's kind of close, eh? There's a very close link here between, um, uh, between email and between internet. 
But when I look at it very carefully, I can see internet is slightly lower than my email. In fact, internet is 14.5%, where email is, sorry, internet is 127 We're dealing with 2001. That's silly of me, hey? And email is 134 So my internet is the lowest uh, usage. All right, next one. Calculate the difference in the percentage of the schools that had access to running water during uh, those two different years. So let's calculate the difference. Running water, here it is here. This is what we're dealing with. So we're going to say 60,5 minus 48,4. So let's do that. We're taking out our calculator and we're saying right with the use of our calculator. And let's just go there so we can read those figures. We've got 60. 0.5 minus 48.4. And we get equal to, and my answer is 12,1% difference. So the difference is going to be 12,1%. Okay, and we would just write that up there 12,1% difference. Fantastic. I think the competition's closed. Is that right, Tom? Yes, it is just closed. So mindset is. Unfortunately, if you didn't follow the procedure, I can't really help you. Because, guys, I said make sure you go to the to the events page. So, oh, I don't know. Like today, I'm just <laughs> I can barely speak. But so you know, mindset is we're going to be giving away stuff every single day. So make sure you check the events page. Make sure you look up the events page. We'll be posting it in our greeting posts. So check on the events page and look under the post a challenge question comment code answer in that order events page challenge question comment post code answer in but, that order but unfortunately folk we're not giving any more competition questions with math slit exactly because for the next few days they're different subjects. subjects so what we'll do is later on after the next ad break or after the following ad break in the last 10 minutes of the show we will go through that um competition question and then we'll announce the winner i think we're exactly. announcing it today are we yes we are excellent so before the end of this program you will know if you're the lucky winner of t-shirts some very loud and horrendous dvds <laughs> or some fantastic <laughs> maths lit uh workbooks okay back. Is, don't don't bother don't worry about peter he's just old you know <laughs> back to right back to maths lit now, which faculty or service showed the greatest increase in percentage over the two years? All right, folks, we're very lucky with this graph, eh? Because not only do we see the bars, but if you look carefully, we also see all these w wonderful figures. And seeing these figures is actually going to help us answer that question. But just to get an idea so I don't go through every single set of uh, figures and saying this one minus this one equals that, this one minus, I'm going to use the bar to determine which is probably the biggest difference. So let's have a look here. If you look at electricity, there's a difference of about that amount over there. Uh, running water, there's a difference over there. Okay, library, little bit of a difference. Now, check computers, hey? Whee, that huge difference. Email is so small, you can hardly see the pink line. Likewise with internet. So I would say the biggest difference is going to be this computers. And let's use these figures over here. So using my figures, I'm going to say, right, uh, let's just move a calculator again so we can see those figures. We're going to say 53. Uh, point zero minus 23.6 equals, and my difference is 29.4. So the difference is going to be 29,4%. Right, next question. If 2,500 schools were surveyed in 2009, calculate the number of schools which had library facilities. Okay, so we've got, tw uh, what's this, 2,500 schools, but there's a certain percentage of them which have libraries. So let's go back up to libraries and let's have a look. 
In 2009, we had 24,6% having libraries. So we're going to say times 24,6%. And again, folk, our calculator is going to do that for us. Eh? Well, we hope it will. There we go. Okay, again, I'm moving my calculator, and let's go. We've got 2,500 multiplied by a uh, fraction button. 24.6 multi, oh, sorry, oops, 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 get rid of that, over 100 equals, and my answer is 615. So 615 schools have library facilities, okay? So we started by saying, right, we've got the 2,500 schools, we've surveyed 2,500 we were told that 24,6% of them had access to libraries. So all we did was 2,500 times 24,6%, and we got our answer of 615. Okay, fantastic. Let's move on. My next question. Now, this question is uh, also from a paper one, okay? Mrs. King inherited an amount of 150,000 rand. She decided to invest the money at a bank and to use some of the interest to pay for an overseas holiday in China. She chooses ABC Bank, which offers 6,6 .6 compound interest per annum. Calculate the value of her investment after three years. And that's the formula we're going to use. Okay. So, our formula, straightforward. And there's nothing hard about this question, eh? A is equal to P. Bracket, 1, plus I, all to the power of N. We told A is the final amount, and that's what we're trying to do. P, or calculate, P is the amount invested. Now, how much is she actually investing, right? She's investing 150,000 rand. So, we've got 150,000 rand. 1 plus what is my interest rate? Let's have a look at it. It's 6,6% 6 .6 compounded interest per annum. In other words, there is no compounded quarterly like was in the competition question, and there's no compounded monthly like you would probably definitely get in a paper too. This is just straightforward, guys. 6,6%. 6 .6 so let's write that down. So it's 6,6%. 6 .6 How do I write that as a decimal? Okay. What is 6,6? 6,6%. If I do that, 6,6 6 over 100. And my calculator would say, hey, that's actually 0, 0, 0,0666. 6. Whoosh. The amount of students in matric who take 6,6% 6 and write it as 0, 0,0666. 6. Oh, my giddy aunt, that is horrendous. But it happens all the time. And it's an easy mistake to make, eh? Okay? Because normally we deal with 12% or 14%, okay? And it's 0, 0,12 or 0, 0,14 or 0, 0,1. Now suddenly it's 6,6. 6. And if I gave you 6%, you would put 0, 0, 6. But because it's 6,6, 6, it's going to be 0, 0, 6, 6. And Let's just check that on our calculator. Because again, I always say this, let the calculator do the work. All right, so we've got fraction button, and I've got 6.6 .6 over 100 equals, and we're going to put that out, naught comma, naught, 6, 6, exactly what we said, hey? So it's going to be naught comma, naught, 6, 6 percent. Now, how many times am I doing this calculation? Well, we told that we're going to invest it for three years. So let's do that. So to the power of three. Now, my calculator again comes up, and we're going to do all the work on the, on the calculator. So 1,000, uh, I'm sorry, 150,000, open brackets, 1 plus uh, 0, 0, 0, 6, 6, close brackets, all to the power of 3 equals, and my answer, I'll never remember this, Ty, so you've got to remember this for Alrighty. me. All righty. 181,703 rand and 32 cents. Got it? All righty. Cool. So, what is the time? 181,703 yeah. rand and 32 cents. Excellent. Okay. Now, 
Let's make sure we've answered the question. How do we know when we've answered a question? We go back and read what the question was and say, does our answer and does our question tally with each other? So let's have a look at the question. The question was, calculate the value of her investment after three years, and that's exactly what we've done. We've calculated that investment. Okay, my next question. The next question is still about Mrs. King, but she intends having 15,000 rand available to spend in China. How much uh, will this amount be in Chinese yen? And we're going to say use the exchange rate. Is it Chinese yen or Chinese yuan? Okay. Yen. Yen. Yeah, I thought mm. so too. <laughs> All right. So let's go for it. So we now know that one rand is equal to 0, 0,89 yen. Right, we want 15,000 rand. How much yen is that going to give us? Now, how did I change 1 to 15,000? I multiplied it by 15,000. And what I do on one side, I do to the other, times 15,000 rand. I had someone the other day approach me and they said to me, you know, Peter, Every time you do the show, you always put these funny brackets, okay? And you always say times by this, and then you do the same that side. Surely that's common sense by now. You know what, guys? It should be common sense. And the more I tell you this, the more you're going to remember it. So every show, when we're dealing with exchange rates or we're dealing with ratios, I'm always going to say what you do to one side, you do to the other side. Because I want you to sit in that final paper, okay? Sit in that final exam. Look at your paper and say, oh, this is so easy. Remember that guy on TV who used to just say, times what you do this side, you do that side, let me do it. It must be like my words must jump out at you. Okay, And the more and more you practice, the more and more and more you're going to do this stuff. So when you do that final exam, you're going to know exactly what to do. All right, so what do we do? We times by 15,000. So I've got, let's just clear it, 0,89 multiplied by 15, 1, 2, 3,000 equals 13,350. 13,350, yeah. Okay. And I think we've got to put two little lines through that. Right? I can't believe it. It looks like it's time for another air break. Ty. It's that soon. Like, these breaks just keep rushing up on me. Like, the, But anyway, mindset is, I want you to keep following the lesson. Just because the competition might be closed doesn't mean that you still can't win other stuff. But make sure you just keep on the page. Talk to us. Let us know what you think. If you're lost anywhere, if you need help, let us know. And if you've got a question, yes, please let us know so I can go through it. All right, so mindset is, you've heard it, Drill. But for now, we'll see you after this ad break. And welcome back, mindset is, whew, the show just keeps on rolling, rolling, rolling. So make sure you guys get on the page, though. Ch chat to us. Let us know what you guys are thinking. Pop in between the different pages then, but make sure you keep talking to us. That's the most important part. Let us know what you guys are thinking. But yes, mindset is, we've got a show to do. So on that note, I'm going to hand over to Peter. Peter, take it away. Right, folks, what we're going to do now is I'm just going to go through this. Um, uh, it wasn't a challenge question. It was a competition question, okay? So I'm going to go through the competition questions just so that Ty and that our producer knows what the answer is because she battles there. And then what she's going to do is once I've shown her what the right way of or the correct answer, she will look through all the answers. They're going to put them in, uh, put all the names in a hat, and then they're going to draw it out, and we'll announce that after the next ad break. So right now, let's do it so our producer knows what the answer is and she knows who's correct and who can go into the hat. Okay, so let's do this. So we've got our formula. A is equal to P, bracket 1 plus I to the power of N. Okay, now we know that P means the value that we're putting in the bank. And in this case, it's 1,000 Rand. 1,000 Rand. Okay, bracket 1 plus. Now we just got to get rid of the spring. There goes the spring, okay? And back to our question. One plus. Now, I is my rate of interest. Now, I'm getting 12% interest. Folk, I'm getting 12% interest, which is 0, 
one, two. Twelve over a hundred. Nought comma one, two. So that's my interest. But look here carefully. And I helped you with this. I gave you this clue by underlining compounded quarterly. It means that over the whole year, I'm breaking the year up into four parts. Okay, hence quarter. Now, if I'm getting 12% interest every year, how much am I getting after a quarter? I'm only getting a quarter of that, aren't I? So I'm going to divide my interest by four. Nought comma one to divide it by four. Now, how many times am I doing this? I'm doing it for four years. So it's for four years. But it's not simply four years. Because it's compounded quarterly, in one year, I'm compounding it four times. Right? So my first year it's four times, my second year it's four times, my third year it's four times, and my fourth year it's four times. A total of 16. Or I can say it's four years and each year times four. Okay. Now, let's put this all into our calculator. I'm going to make life easy straight away and say, you know what, I know four times four is 16, so it's to the power of 16. Out comes our calculator, and we're going to do the answer or type in the question. Okay, so here it goes. 1,000, uh, open bracket, 1 plus fraction button, 0.12, all over 4, uh, close brackets, to the power of 16. Now, folk, let's just move this to the side so we can see what our answer is going to be. Equals 1,604 rand 71 cents. Can you see the answer on your scoreboard? Or on your board, rather? It's not A. It's not C, folk. The answer is B. 1,604 rand 71 cents. So my answer then is B. Okay, so our producer now knows what the answer is. She's very excited about it. She's now going through the computer, finding out names, and putting all those who got that right answer, and then she's writing their names on paper, throwing it in a hat. It's a big hat because there are a lot of people that answered. Is that right, Tom? A lot. A lot, a cool. Lot. So she's writing all those names down, putting it on a hat, okay? It's going to take her a while to do it. I'm going to carry on with another question. Then in about 10 minutes and 42 seconds, we'll take an ad break. And then after the ad break, she'll be able to tell us who the lucky winner is. All right. Sounds exciting. sounds like a plan. Okay. So without any further ado, let's get on with the next question, shall we? Right. We're now going to look at a paper two question. And, folk, if you look on top of the screen, there it is. It does come from your February, March um, NSC paper, the paper two. And this was their question 5.1. Okay. So Peggy is the owner of a tasty sandwich company. Her weekly expenses are... Rent, 520 rand. Water and electricity, 390 rand. Wages, 25% of the totally, total weekly expenses. That's interesting. And other, 1,140 rand. What could this other be? Well, folks, that could be a number of things. Eh? Little things that she didn't quite take into account. Maybe a little bit of petrol driving here or there. Okay? Maybe someone does a little uh, uh, job for her and she says, Oh, here's 20 bucks. Thanks for carrying that from my car to the store here. Or maybe it was just an unexpected little expense that came up and she was like, Gee, I didn't even think about budgeting for that. Okay? So it's 140 rand. Okay, now... Calculate her total weekly expenses. Now, folks, we've got to know what those expenses are. And we told that all these are expenses. Look at the question. Who weekly expenses are. So these are all the expenses. Okay. So let's go for it. So we're going to say, right, your expenses are 520 Rand plus... 390 Rand plus 25% of the total weekly expenses. We'll come back to that. Plus 140 Rand. Okay. Now, let's calculate what that's all going to be. Now, I'd like to believe this is 25% of the total weekly expenses up 
to here. Okay, so the weekly expenses don't include the wages. Because if they included the wages, well, we wouldn't be able to work that out, would we? Not at all. So it's 25% of these expenses so far. So let's add them up. And we are going to say, right, with our calculator, we've got 520 rand. Plus, we've got a further, let's have a look at it here, 390 rand. Plus, we've got 140 rand. Okay, equals, and there's 1,050 rand. So we've got 1,050 rand. But remember, that's not our final set of expenses. We've still got to add the wages. And what are the wages? The wages are a further 25% of that amount of money. So we're going to say, right, of this amount of money, 1,050, we're going to multiply it by 25%, and we get an answer then of 262,050 cents. 262,050 cents. So that's got to be added to our wages. So we're adding that. So our calculator will do it for us again. We got the 262.50 plus the 1,050 rand equals, and my expenses are 1,312 rand 50 cents. 1,312 rand and 50 cents. Though that is my total weekly expenses. Happy? Of course you are. Let's go on. Write down a formula that Peggy could use to calculate her total costs in rand per week f f uh, for producing uh, times the number of sandwiches in the fall. Okay. So total costs in rand per week equals. So what's it going to be? It's going to be rent plus water and electricity, okay, plus uh, the other 140 rand plus 25 percent of those expenses. Okay, now it does ask uh, in rand, so we've got to have it in the rand. So the total costs is going to be expenses, okay, plus uh, 25 percent of those expenses. Not quite sure what that examiner wanted for that question because it asks it for it in rand. But I think what we could actually do is just put the answer because we've calculated it, haven't we? Yes, we did. We calculated it here as, uh, what was our final answer? 1,312 and 50. So we could say, what's your week um, expenses? That is going to be 1,312 rand 50 cents. We've done it, Okay. We don't need to write it out again. Next question. Let's try the next question. There it comes. Okay, so Peggy's total cost for making sandwiches in one week amount to 2,400 rand. How many sandwiches were made? Okay, so first thing we need to know then is how much did each sandwich um, cost to, to make? So the cost of the ingredients and packaging is four rand per sandwich. We know that she's made 2,400 rand. That's the costs in total. So she hasn't brought that money in. That's how much it's cost her to make all these sandwiches, hundreds of the things. Well, we're not sure if it's hundreds, but quite a lot anyway. So how are we going to work out? We're going to say, well, if I cost me 2,400 rand in total... And each sandwich costs me four rand to make. How do we know that? The question tells us that. Okay. Then my answer is going to be, and our calculator will do that for us again. It's going to say 2,400. Divide that by four equals 600 sandwiches. So she's made 600 sandwiches. Guys, can you imagine making 600 sandwiches in a day? Jeez, I make the sandwiches for my family. Every morning I wake up. How's this for a ritual? I think I'm a great dad. Every morning I wake up, make tea for my wife and my son, okay? 
wake them up with their cup of tea. So they wake up in bed and each get a cup of tea and a biscuit. Then while they're enjoying the tea and the biscuits, I run off to the kitchen and make sandwiches for school. And I want to tell you, that's such a mission. I just do not enjoy doing that. Because you're like, what can I put on the sandwiches today? Now, imagine making 600 sandwiches in one day. That would just drive me totally, totally insane. But that's what she does. What's her next question? Our next question says this. Oh, it's got nothing to do with that. Okay, here we go. Right, Peggy uses the following formula to calculate the total production cost in rand per sandwich. So she says 1,400 rand divided by X plus 4, where P is the total production cost per sandwich, and X is the number of sandwiches produced per week. Got that? So calculate the missing values A and B. Explain the meaning of each of these calculated values. All right. So Peggy comes up with this formula, and I'm not sure why she came up with the formula, but she comes up with the formula anyway. And she says this, that P is the total production cost. In other words, she's saying, you know what, when I make these sandwiches, there's a cost involved. Okay. And what is the cost involved? Well, the cost involved we saw, you've got to take into account your rent. You've got to take into account your water. You've got to take into account the wages. You've got to take into account the bread, all the ingredients and all that stuff. And she somehow takes all these figures and comes up with a formula that says the total production cost is equal to 1,400 rand divided by the number of sandwiches produced per week, plus four. Okay, so let's see how she actually did that. So let's see how she got these answers. So I'm going to start off by looking at something that's given to us before we try and find the value of A and B. So the number of sandwiches per week. Let's see how she got the 18. What she said was this. I've got 1,400, I'm going to divide it by 100 sandwiches, okay, and then I'm going to add 4. And so with her calculator, she said now 1,400 divided by, what was it, 100 plus 4, and she gets an answer of 18. So the total cost of producing one sandwich is then 18. Now we know that her formula is working. Now we can calculate A and the calculate the value of B after this ad break. Right. Woo. Mindset is, I hope you guys have been following along and making notes and writing down this material because it is so important that you guys make notes. I cannot stress this enough. And yes, guys, keep chatting to us on the page. Post, 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 post. For now, we're going to see you after this ad break. And welcome back, Mindsetters. Hope you had a great little break there. Guys, I cannot stress enough. I hope you're making notes. You're writing this down. And make sure that you keep talking to us on the page. Do not forget, we still have a show to do, so keep, make sure you keep posting, send in questions. If you're lost, if you need help, let us know. But for now, this is where I hand over to Peter. Peter, take it away. Right, folk, we were just looking at this question before break, and it was all about, what's it, Peggy? Hey, I've forgotten her name. Who was it? Yeah, it was Peggy, and she comes up with a formula and says this is how we calculate how much it's going to cost us to produce one sandwich. Okay, so she's saying this. If I make 100 sandwiches in a week, the total cost of producing one of those sandwiches is going to be 18 rand. But if I produce 200, the total cost per sandwich is 11 rand. If I produce 400, the total cost of producing one sandwich is 7 rand 50. The total cost of producing um, 700 sandwiches is going to be 6 uh, rand a sandwich. Now, let's have a look here because I find this question most intriguing. In fact, between you and me, it doesn't make too much sense. But let's have a look at this. So what we're saying now is how much is it going to cost us to make one sandwich 
if I make no sandwiches. Hello? That just doesn't make sense. How much will it cost me to make a sandwich if I don't make one? Well, that question makes no sense at all. And I'm going to show you how it makes no sense. Let's slap these figures into our question here, or into our formula. So I've got 1,400. I'm going to divide it by X, and X is the number of sandwiches per week, which is going to be zero, plus four. Now, folk, I'm going to have something plus four, which is something. Now, what is 1,400 divided by naught? Ty, what do you think it is? No, it's not naught. Okay, <laughs> so it is not zero. And I'm going to show you this on my calculator. If I go 1,400 divided by naught, my calculator is going to say, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, error, error. Something's wrong here because you can't divide by zero. And so when I look at this, I'm going to have an error here, which is saying, hey, something's very wrong. It doesn't work. Okay. And something not working plus four is something not working. We got an error. Okay. In other words, folk, we cannot calculate it working with this formula. So Peggy has a wonderful formula here, but unfortunately, it can't help us calculate the cost of making no sandwiches. Right. Next one. What's the value of B? So we have our formula P is equal to 1,400 divided by X plus 4. P we know, hey, because it's the total cost per sandwich, which is 2 rand equals 1,400 divided by X plus 4. Right. So now we want to get X by itself. In order to get X by itself, the first thing I'm going to get rid of is this plus 4. When I take it across, it's going to become minus 4. So I've got 2 minus 4 is equal to 1,400 divided by X. So 2 minus 4 is going to give me negative 2. Is equal to 1,400 divided by X. Let's cross multiply. I'm going to get minus 2 equals 1,400. Minus 2x equals 1,400. Now, x is going to be 1,400 divided by minus 2 equals, and we're going to get an answer of minus 700. In other words, if I want to say, if I want my sandwiches to cost me only two rand each to make, I've got to make minus 700 sandwiches. Now, folks, that's impossible. You can't make minus sandwiches. In other words, I'm never going to be able to get my cost down to only two rand a sandwich. This was a horrible question, hey? Fact, outright, I'll tell you straight. I do not like this question because it was filled with horrible, ugly little tricks. Okay, really not a nice question. And so you'd have to have been very careful answering this one. Okay, now I know we've only got around about five minutes before the end of the show. Do we have a, a winner yet? Is it time to yes. announce or are we going to wait a few more seconds? Mm, I'm thinking if we should keep them on the edge, just suspend it just a little bit. Hmm, because we do have our winner, and I'm actually thinking... We'll wait a while. We'll wait a while. Okay, so let's wait a while. Yeah. Let's have a look at another question. My next question is this. The principle, and again, it comes from that uh, other paper that they wrote in February, March, okay? The principal of a local school asked Liesle, how would you pronounce that? Liesle, yeah, huh? Liesle, yeah. Liesle to take over the running of the school tuck shop. He wanted to show Lee Claire that the annual profit from the tuck shop increases each year. Now, table one below shows the profit of the tuck shop for the last five years. So there it is. Profit from the school tuck shop over the last five years. 2007 made a profit of 10,300. 2008 had a slight drop, eh? Only 10,200. 2009 went up to 10,400. 2010 stayed at 10,400. 2011 went up. 
to 10,500. Now, we get two graphs given to us. Graph A, the annual profit of a tuck shop. Graph B, the annual profit of a tuck shop. Oy, look at that, hey? So now, what's actually happening? What's the difference between these two graphs? If you look here, you can see that this graph is showing for 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011. This graph on my right, though, is showing just for 2007, just 2009, just 2011. And then the principal has drawn a line to join those dots. Now, if you look at that, folk, those two graphs are symbolizing the exact same information, except in the one graph, we're missing out two years. So we're just showing 2007, 2009, 2011. The other one we're showing each year. So when you look at these graphs, none of them are telling any lies, but the one has more detailed information than my other one. Now, my next thing. Explain why the two graphs have different shapes. Well, we've just gone through that, hey? Because 2, 7, 2, 9, 2, 11, only three years are shown in this graph, whereas in my first graph on my uh, left here, you can see it showing for each and every single year. Now, guys, that brings up a whole new discussion, how people can take different stats and produce graphs and show graphs in such a way that it looks like you're um, wanting to bring your own point across. So, for example, if I was called in, if I was running this tuck shop, I wouldn't want anyone to know that in the one year our profit wasn't as high as the other year. Okay? So I would come in with this graph over here, and I would take that into my principal and say, look at this graph. This graph shows how our profits are getting higher and higher and higher. In 2007... It was 10,300. 2009, it went up. 2011 went up. How fantastic. Now, if I was not happy with the current person running the tuck shop, and if I wanted to take that job over, I would go in with this graph over here. And I'd say to the principal, check this out, eh? One year, 10,300. The next year, 2008, there was a drop in profit. Mr. Principal, we can't have that. That person running the tuck shop is actually no good. Then it went up a little bit, but the following year it just stayed the same again. How can you just not increase your profits? Mr. Principal, get rid of that tuck shop owner. Let me take over. I will get your profits going right up. But if I was a guy running the profit, I would show the principal this graph and say, you know what, guys? You can see my profits are getting higher and higher and higher every year. Same information, but what are we doing? we manipulating and playing around with that information. And there's a lovely story I've got as well, based on a true story, but I won't have time to tell you, so I'm not going to tell you. Okay, right, let's have a look at our next question. Is it time to announce... I think we might have to announce because we are running out of time very quickly. We are indeed. Okay. Mm. Well, would you like to do the honors and tell us who the winner is? All right. So the winner is... And what are, sorry, first of all, what are they winning? Are they winning everything? Pretty much the whole The package, whole package. So it's not so one prize to one person. It's no, everything. It's everything. So three so CDs, three two CDs. books, and a shirt, all in one. All in one. So... <laughs> It goes to Agnes Pellete. Thank you for SMSing in. So you see, mine said it so you can SMS and Facebook and Peptex and email us at win at learn extra. So I just want to say congratulations. You get this awesome electro CD and this awesome proverb CD. I'm holding them all upside down. Thanks for telling me, Peter. <laughs> but anyway, also, this Mikasa CD. Guys, I just want to say, do not forget that these will, we're going to be giving away these every single day for the for the rest of this week. And so you know, there's going to be repeats of shows that were played in the morning and this afternoon that's going to be happening straight after this. And another one that's going to be happening at 10.30 tonight. So make sure Mindset is if you want to catch up, you catch on those shows. But for me, this is where I sign off and say thank you for joining us. Shout out to Liberty for sponsoring the show. And this is where I say thank you and see you next time. Cheers.